You ready? Check the mic and make sure it sounds right, boys. Oh, yeah. Welcome back to the Gentleman's Den. Jeff and Sean here this week to finish off Je- your fancies. To, to finish <laughs> off Jeff's story from last week. First we're gonna start what? this <laughs> first we're gonna start this one out with saying uh due to uh some family business, Frankie's not here this week. And I just wanna thank Frankie for coming the last you know, his dad's battling right now, so it's really nice that he does sometimes give us 10 minutes of his, <laughs> give us an yeah. hour of his time. But yeah, we don't want to, you know, put his business out on the streets. That's his yeah. story to tell. But Frankie's dad has been battling cancer for a while. And, you know, we give him shit about not coming out for COVID. And, you know, we're just, we're busting his balls. He's, he's been taking care of his dad for a long time. And, yeah. uh, you know, our hearts and prayers go out to him. He he has been a trooper. He comes out, well, on, not out, but he comes on this fucking thing yeah. almost every weekend. You know, he bears through it, and he loves talking with us. Yeah, for sure. He's just... All of you guys, so... Yeah, so... Uh... It's been a rough week, so if you if you know him personally, which I know a lot of our listeners do... You know, just give him a shout out and yeah, send him let a text. Him know his, and prayers are with him. Yeah, for sure. Love you, bro. See you next week. Yes, hopefully, hopefully we'll see Frankie next week. Back next week, and uh, we'll uh, we'll soldier on without him this week. We'll try. I mean, yeah. Frankie's a rock. Well, Frankie's that guy who just doesn't shut the fuck up, so there's never any dead air time. <laughs> Anytime they say, yeah, we don't need to worry about any dead air when we get three of us because Frankie can can talk for hours. So what I was going to say to him last week, too, is, you know, when he smokes, when his cough is so, like, powerful, I'm wondering if that's what's not fucking his throat up. You know what I mean? He's like, I don't know. His throat's always red and raw. Yeah, well, he coughs. So he honestly, he thinks that. He smoked out of a bowl, and he thinks that a cherry got in there. It landed on that punching bag in the back of his throat, and that's what caused. <laughs> that's what caused his. Uh, was it canker sore? Yeah. Close. Yeah. Canker sore. I don't know what the fuck. Oh. No, that Ladies wasn't a burn. Damn near. She's just like, if it's that far back in his throat, it's probably strap. Yeah, and possibly. It's possible. All right, Jeff. You left them hanging out last week. We need to hear the story. Bro, I don't know how deep I should get. I mean, I'm going to be honest. I went fucking deep. I went down a... Oh, a, well, before we start this story here, this one's for Frankie. Fresh bottle. Love loves Jameson. Fresh, Fresh bottle. bottle of Jameson. Son of a bitch. Salute. He likes to say Nastrovia. Nastrovia. And he's Italian, so that makes no sense. Well, his dad's Polak. Yeah, Polak. He's Polak, bro. He's Italian Polish. How dare you? What'd you wash it down with? What you got there? It's like some kind of jamba juice. Old Orchard (laughs) Strawberry Lemonade. Not a sponsor. Goddamn right. I strawberry lemonade meal. I, uh,. Since last week, I've uh, cut down on the eating. I mean, I've already dropped five pounds pretty quickly. Uh, Good. I'm trying to cut back on the sugar. I mean, this is obviously all sugar, this fucking lemonade. So, I haven't had an energy drink almost two weeks. That's good, man. Yeah, I'm, uh, I, I mean, I haven't even been buying the normal shit I would. The uh, uh, candy and shit like that. I've just been. Anytime I want something sweet, it's like I eat a clementine orange, and I'm good. 
What's up? Hi, JP. Gone. You got a resolution? No, it's a, yeah. Don't die of a heart attack. So, <laughs> so yeah, I'm a. That's that's a good. That's a goal. Yeah, and I sure. uh, and I'm cutting down just my intake in general because you know, fuck, dude, you sit down, you eat a frozen pizza to yourself, and then yeah, you fucking just hammering everything in your fridge at fucking two o'clock in the morning. Yeah. But yeah, I uh, I asked before I tell my story, your shirt, Rainbusters, is that is that from Billy Madison or No, no, that would be Arn Anderson and Tully Blanchard of the Four Horsemen. As soon as I saw it, I was like, Any more Rainbusters? <laughs> yeah, th- this was uh on the top of the fucking laundry stack, so I just grabbed what was at the top. I I'm not. I wasn't going anywhere today. I was sitting around watching bum ass football. <laughs> we can get into football for sure. Boring well, games. Well, let's be honest. The Rams were didn't have a shot because half their fucking team was gone. Half their team's out. So if Green Bay lost that game, which I don't even understand how it was. You know, the last touchdown is kind of a meaningless touchdown because they, I mean, they were up. So it was a 31-16 or whatever the game was, however it ended. I don't even remember. That game that was, was kind of, we talked about it earlier and on this. I, it, it was a phone game. I was looking at my phone most of the time. I'm not, a, I'm a Bears fan. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm just, I'm we're, a fan of the Bears and whoever's playing the Packers. Yeah, we're, we're, so I wanted we're the in the off win, season right now. There was no shot. So I was basically on my phone the whole time, just kind of, if something exciting happened, I'd glance up and yeah. check it out. It's kind of the Ravens game. The Ravens game, I thought it was going to be high scoring, two uh, exciting mobile quarterbacks that, that are very accurate, you know, throwing the ball. And three to three at halftime, I was. Well, it, it, it wasn't just that, it was just so windy there like any deep ball you saw the wind just take it especially on yeah the one josh allen had that dude wide open and, and the, it just you could just see it carried and that looked like a mitch bomb that was a mitch bomb that looked like a oh, mitch bomb for sure but oh, <laughs> next <laughs> my cat's ready to go easy mama tomorrow we got Good old uh, Brady and Breeze as the night game. So, you know, the old Jared Tall on a that pole game on match. the History Channel? <laughs> Fucking Brady and Breeze still doing it. One's 43, one's 42. It's fucking unbelievable. I mean, yeah, I'm as old as Brady and Breeze. But let's put that in perspective. Yeah. Hence the reason why last week when Frankie was like, we got to go snowboarding, we got to go. Fuck that, dude. After watching Tom Segura blow himself up with like, trying to dunk a basketball. <laughs> I honestly refused to watch it. As soon as you sent it and I saw him laying on the ground with his arm up like that, I was like, I don't even need to see this. I already know what's going to happen. I'm going to watch this, throw up in my mouth, and then my night's going to be ruined. So. <laughs> I'm just going to keep scrolling and put this one to bed. I'm just going to uh, use my imagination. It's what to happen, and it's probably about the same thing that happened. I have never seen someone's arm go rogue like that before, though. <laughs> His arm. It was, it was reverse chicken wing. His arm just fucking went suicidal on him. It was like, fuck it. Oh, you blew your knee out here. Your arm's going to hurt, too. Yeah. Done, but I saw him. Nice, nah, got like some. Looks like Game Boy. <laughs> well, yeah, it's got it because Game Boy glove. It's to keep the circulation going in his hand, so it heals. Yeah, that's crazy. Well, I mean, if you're brave enough, go Google it. I think we talked about this on. Yeah, we podcast. talked about that last week. But hey, why not? And I promise, I'm going to give you my story about last weekend eventually. I we got it. Talk about playoffs, baby. So playoffs. I'll I'll go into my. I took a week off of uh, 
vitamins, smokable vitamins. <laughs> oh, bowl full of vitamins. I, I like it. I, 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 t- I like that. I, I took my week off of smokable vitamins, and uh, last well, night last week we talked about your uh, two one a days. Oh yeah. Is this is this something different? Something new, Sean? The, well, no, it's not new. I've been doing it since I was fucking. <laughs> 16 but <laughs> but you used no. to do it out of a coke can a coke can or a fucking <laughs> aluminum fucking pipe but Frankie uh he can tell the story the next time he's on but you they had nothing to smoke out of john i'm sorry for cutting you off you can continue your story in a second go ahead but this is too good not to share it's fresh in my mind you know smoking pot out of an apple right so Frankie, Frankie had nothing to smoke out of him and his buddy. They're just, just scrounging. Okay. They grab a fucking lime. <laughs> oh. Horrible they tried idea. To make a bar, they tried to make a bowl out of a lime. Worst decision and the biggest waste of marijuana in the history of mankind. <laughs> Dude, and see, the reason why an apple works is because they're not super fucking juicy. Oh, dude, you should see. I would just sat back and watch. But I'm still not. I wasn't a big smoker. I'm still the edibles is the greatest invention to me, known to man. I love them. I go on journeys through time and space. I don't like the whole process of packing, cleaning bowls. Coughing my fucking ass off. I don't know how high I'm gonna get. Well, that's the thing with you. I like edibles. Package neatly. I know what I'm in for. If I did, what? I know what's gonna happen to me. Yeah, with the you. problem with bowls and pipes and bongs is I think I'm still in high school. Yeah, and your your power lung and everything. And I am, <laughs> yes, I'm power lung and. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm good. And then I end up at the movie theater losing my tickets. <laughs> I can't get in for a movie I just paid for because <laughs> I've misplaced my ticket. And then I finally find my ticket, standing up at the counter after I got my popcorn, leaning against it, sweating, <laughs> <laughs> waiting for everyone else to get their shit. I'm like, come on, I got to get in there. I got to sit down. That's when we went and saw Alice in Wonderland in 3D. It is, and we're going to wait for you to tell the story in completion, but let's just say I went on a spiritual journey. That movie sucked, by the way. I'm the just saying. The best part was the credits at the end. Yep. Visually, with the mushrooms and the changing colors, I was in. I said, this is the best movie I've ever seen. Well, and it was also weird with little kids all around us, and we were fucking... <laughs> <laughs> just flying around Saturn. You know what? I'm going to tell you right now. Train me for parenthood. I wouldn't be the father I am today without that experience. So I, I watched a movie called The Binge on Hulu yesterday. And mind you, I have not imbibed all week. It's... It's been actually nice. I mean, I slept great for some reason. Like, and I slept better without it. So, so are you like pretty avid? Because I do it maybe Friday or Saturday. Sometimes not at all. I didn't at all this weekend. But are you well, like a daily? Well, so not daily. Not when you're working, obviously. No. But like, are you a come home? Yeah, I I, I was, and I. I realized, like, that whole time I was off, that week I was, you know, last week I was off. Dude, the depression hit. I'm going to be honest with you. It hit super hard. And Without the ganj? It, with the ganj. Oh. And, and uh, I was just, lack of motivation to do anything. I just felt like shit. So I'm like, you know what, fuck it. I'm going back to work. I'm just going to fucking not smoke. I'll be, you know, I'll smoke whenever I feel like it. I just don't feel like it right now. Basically, what what I like to call a tolerance break. 
And uh, so, in like Thursday, when I was at the second job, everything hit, like clicked in my brain. Like all the bullshit, all the cloudy bullshit that, you know, the depression, the sitting at home, the sick, you know, the circle, everything being the fucking same all the fucking time right now. Yeah. Work, it, go home, work, go home. Yeah. So, and I just, I just felt for some reason, I felt like a weight lifted off my shoulder. I don't know what the fuck happened. So, Friday, I'm like, ah, I'm going to watch a movie. <clears throat> so I put on the movie The Binged on, uh. Hulu, which is basically the purge, but instead of going out killing everybody, you get one day a year to, because they've outlawed all narcotics and alcohol, so you get one day a year for 12 hours <laughs> to go to go ham and do whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> That's the greatest premise of a movie of all time. Whoever thought of that's a fucking genius, bro. You know what we should do? It's probably dudes like us just sitting around. Yeah, and, bro. You know what we need to do? So this I purge movies dope, right? So I watched it sober at first. Think <laughs> it's over. And then and I la- I laughed my ass off the whole time. It was fucking hilarious. And then I'm like, all right, well. I still got, I think, one or two puffs left in this bowl here that's been sitting there for a week, so I might as well hit that. Yeah, holy shit. Instantly to fucking Saturn. I haven't been that stoned in fucking a year and a half at least. Watch that movie again, and my dog's looking at me thinking I'm fucking dying because I'm laughing so hard. My ribs hurt. Oh, shit, bro. I started He's pick- like, oh, no, this is the guy that feeds me. I started picking up all <laughs> the fucking. Die, I'm going to die. I started picking up all the fucking, like, in- like, the little fucking inside jokes and shit that I didn't catch oh, the first yeah. time, and I am fucking dying laughing. And so I'm, I wake up today and I'm cloudy. I'm like, all right, yeah, I know what I'm going to do now. So it's, I'm cutting it back to probably once a week. I haven't smoked it all today. So that's the reason why I'm yawning. Plus sitting through those two fucking <laughs> football games. Those two football games. <laughs> yeah, I know. that was the yawn fest for sure. The premise to that movie, I can't wait to watch it. It's Dude, on Hulu? Yeah, it's on Hulu, The Binge. Who's it, in it? Uh, Vince Vaughn and then a bunch of young actors, one of them being, you know who Casper Van Diem is? Starship Trooper is the lead character? Yes. His daughter yes. is in the movie. His daughter? His daughter. He's a beautiful man. His daughter's oh, got to be hot as hell. Yeah, she's she is beautiful. And then it's... Uh, <laughs> Uh, and I can't think of the kids' names, but if you saw the movie where the uh, they were camping and the dude cuts his dick off on accident, no, I didn't see that one. That one's on Netflix. That's another funny movie to watch. But he's in it, and then it's just the story is so fucking weird. The see, there's a scene. I gotta tell you the one scene. The mother. Which one we talking about? The dick one or the no the binge. the binge. The mother says a line in this movie that made me fucking laugh so hard sober that when I saw it stoned, I couldn't breathe (laughs) for fucking two minutes. The son and mother are screaming at each other, like legitimately, you could like the most hateful fucking screaming at each other. Uh And she's like, just cause they're just arguing that she was instantly confrontational. As soon as she got to the first fucking right. As soon as she got into the scene, she's sitting down smoking. Like it looked like a blunt, like a, but it, I don't think she was just smoking the cigar. 
And they start going, and the banter they have going back and forth, it's like the scene in Waiting where Ryan Reynolds is talking to his mom, and it's like, you know how <laughs> yeah. they're like just ripping the shit out of each other back and forth? This woman said, she goes, I was locked up in a Panamanian prison hanging from my labia, and I just... <laughs> I was fucking what? like just the whole scene is so fucking <laughs> it's so fucking asinine. Right, I'm gonna watch this tomorrow. If it, those playoff games tomorrow are as boring as they were tonight, I'm watching it. It's it is Big. it's seriously one of the funniest fucking because it's so raunchy. It's the movie is just filthy throughout the whole thing. That's my brand. It's, but, but what I'm noticing now, as I get older, the jokes aren't as hidden as they were like when we saw movies. You know what I mean? Like they yeah. just flat out come out and say just the well, shit. What's great is like, what's great is some of the kids. So as being a parent, some of these kids movies you watch. You can't, There's a lot of shit in there. Yeah. <laughs> These kids are all laughing, like, looking around. They have no idea what the fuck they're talking about. It's a funny line. But as a parent, you're like... Yeah. No one's gay. I feel you. But it's, like... like it's it's kind of like that, like... Sneaky humor. Oh, and you'll you'll enjoy it too because their uh, means of conveyance, you know, their way to drive drive around means of conveyance. Yeah, the their way to drive around is one of those pedal fucking cabs like we did in Milwaukee. Oh no! Yeah, so they're <laughs> that was horrible. Oh god, dude, my quad still hurt from that day, dude. Because we had Frankie who was, like, not doing anything. There was... Uh, Wade was on there, who was sick. So he had two people not pedaling. I'm pretty sure it was... And me and you. You and I. You were up in the front, fucking giving her hell. You're Capsilla, goddammit. And I was literally standing up pedaling. I think... Like you, I used to do when I was riding my bike home from school, up the big hill. You Standing up, pedaling, side to side. Just swear... You and I did all the work. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, which kept me sober, which sucked. <laughs> like, when we would when we stopped at that one bar, I'm like, dude, we need to hammer down some fucking drinks. <laughs> I had to, because I was, like, sweating out all the booze. <laughs> I was like, whose idea was this? Are we drinking or working out? I'm confused right now, because my fucking thighs and my calves are killing me. My quads were Pedal on bike. fire. All right, people. PSA: If you're going to do a fucking pedal bike bar fucking party, stretch. Make sure you make sure your team is legit. Yeah, you got to wean out all the slackers. Make sure, yeah. You make... need a fucking bar full of champions ready to die on that bar for you. <laughs> yeah, whether they're drinking or pedaling. Like I at one point I looked next to me. It wasn't Frankie sitting next to me. Yes, and he was like barely. He was just like he his because his feet weren't even on the, the pedals. pedals. Move, no. So the, the pedals are just going underneath his feet. <laughs> I turned and looked at him. And I was like, like, dude, <laughs> you need to fucking pedal, bro. Oh man, those. Poor girls. I I don't think it was one of those trips where the girls look at it and they're like, "Oh my god, this is gonna be so much fun!" And then like when it actually comes down to it, and they're like, "Holy fuck, we actually have to pedal!" <laughs> they're like, "This fucking sucks." Yeah these these are also these girls are also ten years younger than Jeff and I, and they should have the fucking stamina to do this. They should, and they didn't. Barely have stamina for hand jobs anymore. These girls are slack. Let me tell you, Jeff. We've put Step it off. Game up, ladies. We've put it off long enough, buddy. 
it's time for you to tell us the story. Of the guitar fingering? <laughs> the guitar fingering. All right, so let me explain how my Friday night went. And uh, I'm going to pull up my notes here. here because that was... uh, First of all, I took an out of quite early. Two of my favorite things... While under the influence are, well, I guess three. Skittles. Yeah, Wildberry. I love Skittles sober. Wildberry. Wildberry player. We all know that marijuana makes everything better. It just does. I don't know why. It just does. Makes sex better. Makes food better. It makes movies better. It makes music better. So three of my favorite things are wild berry Skittles, ice cream, and music. So I got hot as fuck. And I'm like, you know what I'm going to do? I haven't done this in a long time. I could send you and Frankie some of the videos. Yes, you did. So what you do is you go on YouTube and you open up two tabs. One of the tabs has music. The other has anime fight scenes. <laughs> so you pick you pick a song or a soundtrack or whatever, and then you watch the anime fight scenes. And eventually they like line up, and when they do, it is fucking mind blowing. So basically, do this all the time back in the day. So basically, you're doing the you're doing the Wizard of Oz and uh, Dark Side of the Moon. Yes, but not it's just random. Just type yeah. in anime fight scenes, and then you just type in a song. And it eventually it will match up, and it is it is going to blow your mind and change your fucking life. So, so that's what I decided to do. I'm gonna give a quick side note on that too. And the music Jeff was using was all covers of the songs. It wasn't the actual songs. And you know what? In that moment, Sean, like normally I'd be like, "What the fuck?" But in that moment, I wanted something different because I was. I listened to Smells Like Teen Spirit, and it was a female vocalist, and it was like the aunt, and it was it was what I needed at that time. <laughs> I yeah. text you. I was like, "This is what the universe gave me." <laughs> that exact words. <laughs> because it was it was so it was so different. Yeah, it wasn't the original, but it was a female cover, and it was good, and it was mixed with an anime fight scene. So my mind was just like. It was like hearing the song for the first time. And it was, <laughs> I don't even know what to fucking tell you. So, and this is how I knew Jeff was fucked up when he was sending me the videos. The computer wasn't, like, the video wasn't centered in the screen. Like, he was send, sending the fucking, the shot. Centered to me, bro. He was sending the shot of the computer. Yet, he was like. The half the screen was in the middle, and the other was like the keyboard and the fucking. <laughs> what y'all gonna do? I was like, on a journey, so then I went from that, and I started getting real emotional, real spiritual. So I love acoustic music, acoustic guitar shit. So any band, if you really want to know if they're any good, you go to their acoustic shit. Because if they're good acoustically, mm-hmm. they're probably good live. You know, a lot For of sure. bands are. I remember I went and seen. Uh, who was it? Panic at the Disco. Mm-hmm. Was that the name of the band? Yeah. Uh, I chimed in. Haven't you ever people ever heard yeah. of whatever it yeah. is? I saw them live. It might have been a bad night. It was fucking god off, horrible. Mm-hmm. But then if you listen to some of their acoustic shit, it's not. It's not that great. So normally, if you're into a band and you're thinking about going to see them live, watch their acoustic stuff just to see if the vocals are on par, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I love acoustic music. So I went down this acoustic guitar fingering. (laughs) 
I'm talking about dudes with incense on the top of their guitar. Just <laughs> oh Jesus! <laughs> so I'm watching this dude. What's the song called? I wrote it down. The song of the golden dragon. <laughs> This dude looks like Jesus Christ himself. He's on the streets <laughs> with a fucking the whole streets packed. This guy looks like Jesus Christ. He's got an acoustic guitar, incense burning right off the top. And, and, oh, he's smelling it. He's feeling it. My lady comes home from work. I'm watching this video. I have a bowl of popcorn here. I'm just eating it, and she's like, "I'm not even gonna ask." <laughs> <laughs> away. <laughs> I said you shouldn't You shouldn't right now I'm on a journey <laughs> So then Then I start thinking bigger I'm like alright This acoustic shit It's blowing my mind This is great But I need to think bigger I love movies And I love like movie Good movie scores yeah can't top it because you're thinking of like big picture it's it's emotion i think it's underrated a lot of movie scores yeah because you know, it really has to you, people don't even think they're like oh that was a great movie without even like thinking of the music yeah it's, it, it heightens the emotion of the film one of my favorite scores of all time <laughs> So I listened to the Willow score. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. So good, bro. But then it took a turn. Uh-oh. It took a turn for me. I got an emotion. One of my favorite movies of all time is Inception. Mm-hmm. I love Christopher Nolan. I love his movies, his directing. But most of all, I love the music, especially in Inception. It's great. So I looked up who did the score for Inception. And it's this dude, uh, Hans Zimmer. Mm -hmm. And then I ended up, like, going through his library. So he did Pirates of the Caribbean, which is classic. Yeah. Fucking Lion King, Inception. I mean, it's a bunch of shit. So I went through his whole. Well, I should back up a little bit. First of all, I stopped. I started off with Mozart. <laughs> Good place to start. I, I don't know why. I I love, like I said, I love acoustic music. God, I'm rambling right now, but I'm excited about it. And I really, I, I want to dive into this emotion I felt. I love acoustic. I went into the acoustic, and then I never realized how much I loved piano. Yeah. So I was high as fuck Googling Mozart and listening to all this shit. And then I got the idea to look up scores. So I went through the Willow thing and then I looked up Hans Zimmer and then I was looking at piano versions of Hans Zimmer shit. And I found a song from Interstellar okay. and then the song from Inception, which is Time. Mm-hmm. By Hans Zimmer, and boy, let me tell you, I went on this fucking journey. I don't even know how to describe it. Now, I'm kind of, <laughs> did you have headphones on while you were listening to it, or were you just letting it play? No, I didn't. I I was sitting just as I am right now, mm-hmm. right in front of the computer, and I had my my head down. And my eyes closed, and I was just listening to it. Next time, headphones. And it has to be. But but this was... You know what? This this is a real podcast. Mm -hmm. And I get excited about stuff. And I don't want to, like, hold nothing back. You know what I'm saying? I get embarrassed about shit. Some of the shit we talk about, I'm like, man, should I even say this? But I'm like, fuck it. You know, these people are listening to this. I'm just going to say it. I, and that's what I'm going to do right now. But I, I listened to Time, the piano version. <laughs> and I closed my eyes. And I was just thinking about the story. 
and the movie and like what it's about. And it is an awesome action film. But the bottom line of the story was a guy who was trying to get home to his kids. Mm-hmm. Bottom line, his, he was trying to get home to his kids. And I just, I just closed my eyes and I thought, and I thought about like my childhood. And I thought about like my dad. And I got, got like super fucking emotional. I'm even getting like emotional just thinking. Mm-hmm. I just listen to it on repeat, and I just like close my eyes. And I'm gonna be honest, Sean. I actually cried. <laughs> I cried listening to that fucking song. Dude, that's not a bad thing. That's it's it- not. It's not a bad thing. I mean, it's some people would be embarrassed to say it. I'm kind of embarrassed to say it right now. Like I cried listening to a fucking song, but it was in that moment, in that space that I was at, like just thinking about that movie and what like the plots about and being one of my favorite movies of all time. I literally cried listening to it. (laughs) Well, well, and well, dude, and And honestly, it felt good. Like one of my favorite, one, one of my favorite speeches of all time is Jimmy Valvano. Yeah. When he had cancer and he's up there and he's like, I, I love that speech. If you haven't heard it, honestly, Google Jimmy Valvano SB speech. It is one of the if, greatest speeches of all time. Let me be honest with you. If you haven't heard it, you've legitimately had no form of fucking television in your life. Because... Every, I think it's, what, every February the, for the V Foundation, it's on yeah. ESPN. Don't give up. Don't ever give sure up. I've heard of the V Foundation. It's it's for this this guy. And it is probably one of the most emotional. Just someone who's riddled with cancer, and he is just enjoying every second that he has in his life. Yeah, he's fighting. And you can hear it in the way that he says it, and he, he makes it funny and, and just amazing and i remember one of the things that he came from it he's like every day you should be you know you should laugh you should cry you know every day every single day and i'm just just like you know i can't be scared of it like yeah i cry sometimes i just i get emotional about some shit i'll just cry see i'm i'm the same way i'm just a little bit my my shit's on 10 compared to yours which is on five like that fucking Budweiser commercial from the Super Bowl fucking like five years ago where the fucking they're playing the song from by the by the uh group passenger and it's like a super fucking, you know emotion it's like a whole emotional thing and you've I cry to this day watching it. I tear up watching a fucking commercial. Yeah. Like no, but it's okay. Well, yeah, and it's. But I feel like such a bitch. I'm like, Fuck. well, and with and with you because I've never told anybody about this, <laughs> and then here we are. Yeah, well, with you too <laughs> is because of what happened in your past with your dad and all that shit. You had to be the man of the house, so you never had a chance to fucking really digest that. Well, you know what? That was. That's why, you know, I was like, oh, you're a mama's boy. I was like, well, I didn't have a choice. Yeah. <laughs> one of the greatest things, one of the greatest things my mom ever did for me is, um, you know, all this shit happened with my dad, whatever. And people used to tell me, oh, you're the man of the house now. And my mom's like, don't tell him that. That's not fair to him. You know, a 10 year old boy shouldn't be the man of the house. Yeah, no. Like, I'm a kid. I don't need to be a man of the house. I'm a child. I'm supposed to enjoy my childhood. Yeah. You know, and I always love my mom for, for doing that, for being like, what the fuck are you talking about? He doesn't, he's not the man of the house. He's a kid. Yeah. But you just, you never, uh, Like, I think you repressed a lot of the, the feelings. Cause that's just because that's just how you are. Yeah, I think a lot of people do. Yeah. I mean, that's why comedy and being funny and making people feel good is like what I like to do. 
100%. because I don't like people to feel the way that I felt. Yeah. And, and what are so most comedians that I can do to make you, that's why I like when, when it comes to Christmas or birthdays or whatever, I would rather a hundred percent when someone gives me a present, I'm like turned off by it. Like I feel guilty. I don't deserve this. Yeah. But when I give someone something, that's when I feel like if I give someone something, they're like, holy shit, bro. This, like, that's when I feel amazing. Not when I get something. I'm like so, uh, I don't even want this. Uh, I feel dirty. Yeah. Even though they're giving it to me, you know, maybe out of the same way. You know, if you were to give me something, like, oh, bro, I got you this. Like, uh, but I got you this. Yeah. Like, oh, let's hurry up and get what I got you. Like, we, we've, we've exchanged gifts a couple times. Which is hilarious because both of us are just like, yeah, oh, here. Man. It's not Give wrapped. Gifts. <laughs> it's never wrapped. It's like, fucking, here, I got you this. And you just chuck it at him. But it's, like I said, with our backgrounds being similar with our dads, you know, I saw my dad obviously way more than you saw yours. And I still, you know, unfortunately your dad is gone. My dad's still alive. Champion. Yeah, hide and seek champion, <laughs> as he's known as by Jeff. <laughs> but, like, you cover up the pain with the comedy. Like, you're yeah. like, that, I don't give a shit what anybody says. That shit hurts. Like, oh, 100%. That fucking scene from Fresh Prince. And you know what I'm talking about. Yes, hundred percent. I do. That fucking scene kicks you in the dick, especially when you you've been know through it's it. Even worse. I don't even want to say it because I'm a I'm a sick right now. <laughs> <laughs> the most emotional scene I have is the <sighs> the end of Field of Dreams. Yeah. For sure. What he's going through, and like, if you build it, he will come. And then he's telling he's telling him the story, and he's like, "Is this heaven?" He's like, "No, this is Iowa." <laughs> and then he's like, "Dad," I was like, "Fuck, man!" Every time, dude. I soon yeah. when he says "Dad," I start crying <laughs> every time. Fuck. Well, yeah. It, it- and that's the best part about movies. If you can find something in it or any, anything, do you hear there's songs that you hear, you know, that strike a fucking chord. You know what I mean? Yeah. hundred percent. And it's just, you know, you take that, that what you feel at that situation is something that you should have let out fucking years ago. You know what I mean? So, yeah, you know, the older, you know, like I said, I go, I'll go back to it. Like I wasn't going to do anything stupid, but it was just, you know, it was just with the, the pandemic and everything, just the constant flow of negativity that we saw for legitimately fucking nine months. Well, let's be honest. I mean, it's still going on now with all this election shit and. But it's you, crazy right now. It but, really is. And all these people are just locked into this shit and they don't understand like like these algorithms and all this shit are like they want you to keep clicking. They want you to keep getting on this shit. And the one thing that drives all this shit is fear and controversy. Understand that these news stations, Fox, CNN, they have to pay the bills, and they are in the business of making money. They don't give a fuck about giving the news. All they want to do is make Clickbait. money. Clickbait, so baby. So what, what can we do, what can we say to keep you watching? And that's all they do. 100%. It is legitimately the script for Anchorman 2. 
Yeah. Is it not? Well, that's the thing well, is. I check your man too. It is the realest shit. We're not going to give you the news. We're going to give you what people want to hear. So it's going to be cats on fucking funny cat videos. It's going to be a, squ- a squirrel water skiing in a fucking pool behind her RC boat. That's what people want to see. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Yeah. So you don't want the actual news. You want to argue with people. You want confrontations. And that's what I fucking stay away from. Yeah. So, I'm in the business of me. So I watched. And my friends. And you. I watched the uh, Jacob Blake interview with Michael Strahan from Good Morning America. So we know the facts. So we know the facts. He got shot seven times in the back by a white officer. But the shit, and I, I got to say it this way because none of this was. He's would, the one from Kenosha, right? And this is the guy from Kenosha. And, yes, he was the victim of police violence, but he was also resisting arrest. He also had outstanding warrants. The police were called by his baby mama. The fuck, the, the audio is on there. Of the fucking phone call. You cannot get into a vehicle and drive away when you have seven cops around your car to get to a safer spot. (laughs) It's not how it works. This isn't. But see, this is the problem, Sean. And you got to be careful. I'm being very. You say about this. I, I, I have to be careful because. Anything you like, like with the Kyle Rittenhouse thing, mm-hmm. anything I say, then you can say this, then you can yeah. say this, then you can say this. Okay. Um, you know, he shot those people and then they're like, oh, well, he shot a sex offender. And then you're like, he was out past curfew. And then this person says, yeah, well, he's defending himself. Then this person says he shouldn't even have a gun. He's underage. And then this person says he shouldn't even have been there. Oh, he's a, he, he just got to, you got to tiptoe through the fucking well, yeah, and, and I'm, and I'm, let me, let me finish making my, shit, this is going on YouTube. Yeah. I, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm going to make my point about this. He contradicted himself like four times in the interview. But how the media spun it after that, just like when the verdict came out of them not charging the police officer. And I'll, I'll say his name, Lester Holt came out and said, the case of the black man who was shot by the white officer in Kenosha, Wisconsin. And even in that verbiage, it instantly into that verbiage. Instantly was like, oh, here we go. Here's some bullshit. Well, see, the thing with the Kyle Rittenhouse guy, I'm not defending him whatsoever. But if you're going to show the video, all they do is show him shooting the people. They don't show him getting hit with a skateboard yeah. or getting kicked in the head. You, you, as a new, If you were going to report the news. Report the news. Report the whole story. You should show the whole video. Whether you agree or disagree with what he did, you need to lay out all the facts. A hundred percent. You can't hide part of the story. That's the problem I have. Well, and the God funny thing. It. How did we get from me crying, listening well, to well, cause Hans Zimmer? Because we're, we're, <laughs> we're, we're talking about things admitting, bringing out emotions in people. Yeah. Feel the dreams. Yeah. Which a side note, the bar that written the side note, the writ the bar that written house was at was a block away from my apartment and can and when I lived in Racine. That's the bar I used to go to when I lived in Racine. Oh shit. So, so I saw that and I just kind of chuckled. I was like, man, that bar was a shithole back then. Now it's even now You were like, that's that's my panties on the wall. <laughs> but now I saw that and then I remember back at that bar and I'm just like yeah, that's kind of the scene that would be in there. It'd be old white factory worker type, construction worker type dudes. A lot of Trump votes. A lot of Trump votes. 
<laughs> a lot of Trump votes in that bar. A lot of Trump votes. You know what? I'm not a huge. Well, I'm I'm not a huge political guy. Regardless, like we talked yeah. about last week, I'm all about living in the gray area. I'm going to judge a person by their character, not by their red, white donkey or elephant. Well, that's it's. I always say like like Dr. King said, like Martin Luther King said. I, yeah, I want to be judged by the content of my, of my character, not the pigment of my skin. Exactly. A hundred percent. And that's how I feel. And that's, about how, and that's how I depressing. treat people is by the content Even of their character. Even though I know like, what they want to do. I mean, there's a lot of shit that goes on in politics. I mean, oh, yeah. they can't get everything done they want to do. And that's why, you know, they go on these campaigns. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And then everyone's bitching. You didn't do any of it. Well, yeah, that's every single president known to man. Mm-hmm. You know, they all want to do things, do things, do things. I mean, they're at the mercy of of politics. You know, but it, it is nice to have a president that's a statesman. You know, I didn't believe Obama and everything that he stood for. But when he talked, it was like a conviction. I felt safe. I'm like, this guy has a handle on shit. I mean, forget all the drone shit. And, well, he, you know, t- he, talked, he talked like a leader. Right, and I, I've, I've, I was like, I'm proud to have this guy. He's up there. It's what we needed to do. Work call. Everything's good. Mm-hmm. And I like, I'm like, yeah, I'm handle it. But like with Trump, I'm just like, Jesus fucking Christ, man. Just shut the fuck up. Everything is like, I'm doing great, tremendous. Everything's fantastic. Everything's the best. And I just I have like no confidence. And then like Biden, and I don't want to turn this in going from emotional and to you know presidential. But yeah. you know I think it's important to talk about and important to you know have your opinion on shit. I don't really like Biden either. And that's that's the problem with the whole system is like you have to choose between these two. So are you voting Park, because you love Biden or are you voting just because you hate Trump? You know what I'm yeah, saying? South Park said it best. I don't like it. Can we just start over? Just Can we just wipe wipe this ass and throw this toilet paper out and just start fresh? Biden said it best. Or not Biden. South Park. No. South Park said it best. Our choices were a giant douche or a turd sandwich. That was what we had to choose from. So so what do you want? A giant douche or a turd sandwich? Either way, you're stuck with fucking a mediocre choice. Oh, I don't know. What would you pick? Oh, we just had a giant douche. We just had the giant douche in there for four fucking All right, the douche so is it's, out. Yeah, it's turd sandwich time. <laughs> See, I'm learning so many things. I'm finally adulting. I didn't I I honestly thought once you were president, that was it. You were done. But yeah. I didn't. I didn't even know that Trump could. He Trump can run again in four years. Yeah, <laughs> I had no so, idea. So and yes, let me clarify something from last week because Frankie said some things that were might have been taken out of context about my stance. He gets excited. I liked Trump over Hillary. I didn't. I don't like Trump. All right. Well, he took it when you're like, I support my president, and yes. he's like, Oh, so you're pro Trump? Well, that's no. not the case. No, this is I'm the pro thing. America. I, 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 I'm the same way. I didn't want Trump to be our president, but once he was our president, everyone's like, Fuck Trump! I hope he fails. And I was like, That doesn't. I don't. That I doesn't don't help want our country. Him to fail. That doesn't help us. That doesn't help people. Wanting him to fail because he's a douchebag is not good for anybody. Like I was like I was rooting for him. Like yeah, he's a piece of shit. Yeah, he's a douchebag. But I I just want him to, to do his best and and hopefully he surrounds himself with people who know the system, know how this shit works. Exactly. Which he, but I think he was just too much of a sociopath 
that he just didn't want to listen to anybody. His ego. I didn't want. I didn't want him to fail. No, how big of a douche he was. No matter what you, I never want my president to fail. Exactly. That's just right. So I understand what you were saying. You were. Yeah. You supported your president, and then and I understand you're like, well, what did Bush do? What? And then yeah, it's going to be like, well, what did Trump do? But when Bush and Obama were in office, you supported them. Exactly. But then when it comes out with the, you know, they're not going to, oh, even with Obama, we're not going to do anything with whistleblowers. And then they were the hardest on whistleblowers. It's like, okay, well. Well, and and, and when I say I support my president, I don't support do. his actions. I support him as my president. Right. You want him to do a good job. You want him to. Yeah. I want us to be, uh, you know. Patriotic. Make wow. America great again. Make no America's great as it is. We just need to stop the infighting. What's crazy is how much better we can make it. I don't even think it's at its full potential. Not America's at all. It's awesome. I love it. And See, it could be so much fucking better. Let's let's go back to when nine eleven happened. The country has never been more unified than that time we're like oh right. fuck we're under attack yeah now let's go fuck some people up you know what i mean but if you because um, that's gonna unify us like no one's business yeah i almost saw him the other night too when i had my eyes closed and i was crying i saw the aliens were outside my window <laughs> No, and it it's one of those things where it's and when I like I said, it unified the country, but and by unifying it like you would go down you would go down the street and you would say hello to people. You would you would at least nod, wave, you know, you'd open the door for somebody. You wouldn't be a complete fucking jerk off like damn near everybody is now. Everybody is at everybody. We were, yeah, we were unified because we had a common enemy. Yeah. And now the enemy is your neighbor because he's got a Trump flag on his post. So now he's a piece of shit. Like, in, but like I said, when it comes down to it, if someone's drowning and they have a MAGA hat on, I'm still jumping in the fucking water because yeah. they're a human being, and that's the way it should be. But... Some people don't look at it that way. Some people, honestly, it's sad to say, would let that motherfucker drown. And, and that's what we need to cut off. Yeah, and, and it makes me it makes me E L E. Yeah. It makes me sense. angry. Like I'm you know, I try I give everybody the benefit of the doubt. I do. You know do I see and do we have people that we know that are complete total fucking idiots? Yes. Not sure. saying there anyone on this fucking podcast because we're fucking the top of the top when it comes to our brain power in our group. <laughs> but but when you see the herd mentality where they storm the Capitol, what the fuck are you trying to prove? What what's the well, re- what's problem. what's the revolution? All it takes is one. Eight. All it takes is one idiot, and all the other idiots are like, it's cool. It's the lemmings. Lemmings off a cliff, because they all follow yes. each other right off the cliff. If you don't think for your fucking self, you're never going to succeed in life. If you follow the fucking pack all the time, you're going to get the same result every day fucking time 100 percent. you and i do we do things the same yes but we do things very differently too our our how we live our lives we live our lives very differently just like me, you and frankie live your life very different don't get me wrong frankie likes to dick ride a little bit when it comes to you because you're the older brother type 
<laughs> well, I've known him since he was born. Well, yeah, but like like we were joking about last week with the the fucking leather gloves and fucking Oh yeah. Like <laughs> I don't know what the, I, I I was mad at myself. <laughs> I was like, why the why the fuck? Now let me get this straight. They were leather gloves. They were uh, weightlifting gloves. Yeah, I might even put a picture up on the YouTube video. The they were like drivers' gloves. Yeah, yeah. I just can't. I, I was doing Uber before it was a thing. But <laughs> <laughs> called taxis. But, <laughs> you've learned from that and moved on. Like, listen, dude, I'm 42 years old and I dress like I, I've dressed the same way since you've known me. It's always been t-shirts and jeans. It'll always be t-shirts and jeans. Day over 50. Yeah. I will never, <laughs> I will never tuck a jersey in. How dare you? The f- the first time. You told me before this podcast start, your new balance should be coming in next week. Not a fucking chance, baby boy. <laughs> DC's for life. It's either DC's or Nike's. That's how it works. Maybe I'll throw a pair of Adidas in there every now and then. <laughs> I dare you. No Wranglers and New Balance? Bro, I wear Dickies fucking stretchy jeans because I'm fat. I thought when you I thought when you turned forty, you automatically got a pair of fucking jorts in the mail. Dude, I have jorts, but I've worn jorts all <laughs> I've I've worn jorts since <laughs> Listen, man, I've worn George since the 90s, so there's a difference uh, there. I, I just just said you have jorts. I have a pair of jorts. Black ones. All right, let the record show. Black ones. <laughs> Sean has a pair of jorts. Uh, black L- jorts. Black L- LRG. Wash, black LRG shorts. All but, right, so it's tolerable. Yeah. Say maybe they were echo. I might give you a pass. No, that was my jeans for a long time. Cause they were, yeah, you were at that. Every time we went to the mall, you had to stop at the echo store. Dude, yeah, cause they fit the best for me. Dude, I am. Bro, we're like, we're like pushing 40. Yeah. You still want to go in this store? I'm like, dude. You have to show your ID. And if you're over 40, they tell you to get the fuck out. Listen, man. <laughs> nah, bro, you can't come in here. I got big ass legs, dude. I I am quadzilla. My legs are fucking big. Quads, big calves, calves. calves, quads, calves. The next podcast we should do is just put the camera on your calves and you just flex them <laughs> when you're talking. If you looked, if you looked at my legs, you would think I'm a fucking power lifter. <laughs> oh, especially fuck, my bro. calves. But it's just. It's not that I don't want to change, but like I said, when I see someone tuck a jersey in, I'm just like, Jesus Christ. Like, bro, just just pull it out. That like, is that looks you know what, Sean? so goddamn uncomfortable. I'm gonna tell you this right now. He doesn't have friends like us in his circle. That's his problem. He doesn't have good friends. Because a good friend would be like, bro. Untuck that fucking jersey right now. I'm not going to the game with you with that jersey tucked in. I'm not going anywhere with you with that jersey tucked in. He the, ha- he doesn't have good friends. The only time you tuck, the only time you tuck I'll your, put it out there. the only time you tuck a fucking jersey in is if you're on the fucking field. <laughs> if you're playing. Oh no! Did I lose you? No, I'm. No, we're still here. You still hear oh, me? He might be back. All right, you're back. Sorry, I lost you. Yeah, well, that shitty internet connection you got. Oh, dude, I got to piss so bad. I'm sorry. This is probably the first time I ever pissed during a podcast. So, and, and I'll ask you, you we're, we're over an hour. So, I mean, we can. Are we? Yes, we can end it here because I have to piss real too. Real quick, though, real quick. I know you do. I want you to pull your phone out and start listening off Steel Dragon or uh, Steel Panther. Oh, the Steel Panther songs? So, yeah. yeah I, all right. While you go take a piss, I'll tell the story of, of what happened. So I needed to listen to something that would uh that would make me you know feel better like laugh inside. So I uh I listened to some older stuff that I usually listen to, you know, the my anti-depression mix if you will. 
So then I'm like, you know what, man? I haven't listened to Steel Panther in a long time. So while Jeff's taking a piss, I'm going to read off some Steel Panther Steel Panther song names. We'll start with uh, Death to All But Metal, in which that song talks about uh, murdering Britney Spears and stuff, which is awesome, I guess. Uh, Asian Hooker, there's one for you. Pretty simple. Eating Ain't Cheating. The Shocker, if you know what the Shocker is, it's this guy right here. The Shocker and Girl from Oklahoma. That's off of a Feel the Steel. Off of Balls Out, you had uh, 17 girls in a row, just like Tiger Woods and Weenie Ride. Off of All You Can Eat, you had uh, Glory Hole and Bukaki Tears and Gang Bang at the Old Folks Home. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> a what? Fucking My Heart in the Ass is on that album as well. Jesus Christ. Lower the bar, you have uh, Poontang Boomerang. <laughs> which is Maybe a, this is so I should have less to do stoned. Dude, you, uh, you probably Instead still be laughing. Scores. Yeah, you probably still be laughing. Uh, <laughs> going in the back door is also a song by them. And uh, let's see what else we got to... Uh, it's like a, if you're one of those silent, like if you have the Touch Tunes app on your phone and people are yeah. playing music and you're just over at the bar in the corner and you want to sneak in a little excitement, go ahead and uh, find yourself some Steel Panther. Yes. Because, like they say in the song. John is a karaoke or uh Touch tunes assassin. I am a as you'd call it. I am a master of ruining bar, ruining the vibe of a bar. Because it goes for a while, so Sean will be sitting at his house. <laughs> I, I will do it. Yeah, I can. I can hit every if he bar in Twin Lakes. At a bar, he will play the raunchiest shit he can find <laughs> and play it on the jukebox from his couch <laughs> and just laugh, not even be able to hear it. Or see because it. I he wait, I wait happening. for the Snapchats to come in, or the texts. Like if gay bar plays at a bar, everybody knows who played it. Yeah, everybody knows who played it. So now it's going Do to favor and go Google that video. Gay bar by Electric, Electric Six. Six, one of the greatest music videos ever made. All right, Jeff, you got to tell a story now because now it's my time to uh, go take a leak. <laughs> what am I going to tell? I got no time. At least I gave you a topic. Uh, uh, I mean, I, yeah, I got you. I got you. What do you worry. got on your phone there? Start something. Well, I I just learned the other day. I always thought it was she doesn't have a good uh, gag reflex. Well, my lady, who's a nurse and a uh, deep throater, told me that it was spelled reflux. So I feel like my whole childhood has been a lie. Now, is it gag reflex or gag reflux? I don't know what to do here. I feel like a child who's lost its first tooth just clueless and excited at the same time. Now, is it the way it sounds or the way I'm saying it? Or is it the same thing? The fuck am I even talking about? I'm drunk as shit on a fucking podcast staring at Sean's dog. And I'm going to cry again. <laughs> no, I'm not. Sean, you yes, know what sir. I learned having a nurse as a girlfriend? Oh, boy. What's that? So forever, it was a, a gag reflex, right? Yes. Okay. Well, it's not spelled flex. It's spelled flux. So it was a gag reflux or yeah. gag reflex? So it would be a gag reflux? Right. I feel like my whole world has been turned upside down. I've been saying gag reflex for 
36 years. Yeah, man. Well, it'll always be a gag reflex to me. <laughs> or a reflux. You can start a new chapter. As, as, well, because, yeah, I mean, it should be reflux because you get acid reflux. You know, heartburn yeah, is gag just. reflux. But I've never pronounced it flux. Like, damn, she's got a solid gag reflex. Or none at all, and that's what you want. None? So she chokes? No, no gag. With no gag reflex, she don't. She does not choke. I, that was. That was. Yeah, but that was that. Well, that worries me. If she doesn't choke, I think I'm small. I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. Damn it. <laughs> that was always my. That was always my joke. Was, what do you? What, you know, what's your perfect woman? And then mine was always. A nymphomaniac that owns a liquor store with no gag reflex. Or reflux. Or reflux. Yeah, so that always scared me. When I don't hear him choking on it, I'm like, damn it. My nightmare has come to reality. I'm small. <laughs> or or they just <laughs> got to choke it. They just got to Is real... this girl, do I have a small penis or is she a professional? Professional. Around here, that's what I that's what I say in my head. Like yeah. She's a pro. She's a pro. She's a pro. She's a pro. She is a pro. But when I've dated, <laughs> it might be me. <laughs> Maybe. I'm just gonna say I bang pros. Let's get it. Let's end it on that. <laughs> We uh, we aim the bar low. You gotta. Well, we used to. Jeff got a good one. Well, the bar's never been lower. Twenty twenty, and then into twenty twenty one. I mean, the, it can only go up from here, right? It can only get better. Take some edibles and listen to. Fucking Hans Zimmer. I don't know what to tell you, bro. Take some edibles, listen to Steel Panther. Even better. And and if you have get emotional, I mean I after this podcast done, I'm gonna go watch Field of Dreams. Not gonna lie. No, you're not. You're gonna go watch the binge. Cause you need to laugh. Need Tomorrow's to... the binge. I need to cry tonight, I think. I'm feeling a good cry coming. Oh. And I'm not afraid to say it. Gotta watch old yeller. I might even go to YouTube and you know what makes me sad? What was that movie? The Cat and the Dog? Not Homeward Bound. Milo like and Otis? Or something. Yeah, Milo and Otis. That really makes me sad. Because they went through like 12 dogs <laughs> and 15 <laughs> cats to make that fucking movie. <laughs> so, I'm going to end it on a, a, a... Since Aaron Rodgers played tonight... I think I might have told this story on the podcast before, but Aaron Rodgers was doing an interview on the Pat McAfee show. He does it every Tuesday, Aaron Rodgers Tuesday. But A.J. Hawk's on there, and when Aaron Rodgers did the first commercial with the dog for State Farm. Where he's throwing the ball? No, no, the like the original where they're driving the car, like he's in the car with them. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A.J. Hawk's kids go, oh, is that Uncle Aaron's dog? He goes, no, that's just Uncle Aaron's dog for the commercial shoot. And they're like, oh, what does he do with the dog after? He goes, oh, Uncle Aaron kills it. (laughs) (laughs) Snaps his neck. So A.J. Hawk thought, or A.J. Hawk's kids thought Aaron Rodgers was just a dog murdering monster. Dog murder. (laughs) That is awesome. So... With that being said, <laughs> we're leaving you on a we'll leave you on a joke at least. For Jeff, for myself, for Frankie, you know, thought and T's and P's to Frankie. Thoughts are with him. Uh Yeah. Wanna touch it? Yeah, wanna touch it. Uh thanks for listening. Really Thank you guys for listening through this bullshit. I love all of you and I wanna be open and honest and yeah. Hey, fuck! I cry. Yeah, we're never. And I move on. 
the whole purpose of we this laugh, we cry on this podcast the whole purpose of this podcast is for us to be as open and honest with you people that listen what do you mean you people Sound does butt stuff what do you mean you people no <laughs> <laughs> with the listeners we're i we we will always be open and honest with you we're never going to sugarcoat shit do Je- jeff frankie and i butt heads a lot off of the off air but it only makes the podcast better on air because we get the bullshit out so it's real simple if you talk to the people that you have issues with you should be able to find a common ground even if you don't agree let's move on cool we, that's your opinion yeah you know? it ain't it ain't mine Whatever. It's like telling your friend not to go back to that girl that fucked him over. He gonna go back to her. But she has he's the, gotta accept she's it. got that pussy like Wonder Woman. I, I know, but then <laughs> after it's over he's gonna be like Yep, you should have listened. Right. Should have listened. Gonna shake hands and you're still brothers. Yeah. Brothers for life. I love you, bro. Love you too, man. All right. Miss you, Frankie. Miss you too. Yes, miss you, Frankie. And don't forget to go to shop.spreadshirt.com backslash the hyphen gentleman's hyphen den for all your merch needs. Go buy a want to touch it shirt for Frankie just to uh, be like, hey, man, I kind of want to touch it. Once again, that is shop.spreadshirt.com backslash the hyphen gentleman's hyphen den. Thanks again for listening, guys. Uh, go watch some playoff football. We'll uh, be back next week to uh, figure out who. Recap. Brady or Breeze. Brady or Breeze. And, uh, oh, and uh, James Harden lost all 50 of those pounds. I sent you the picture, Jeff. You should take a look at it. I did. I'm trying to lose, too. Maybe I should be an NBA basketball player. (laughs) I think he found the secret to weight loss. Just be a pro. Basketball. Just be a pro athlete and just go run. Drop fifty pounds in two weeks, no problem. And eat better, like I'm trying yeah. to do. That's the next beach body workout: P90X and pro basketball players. <laughs> all right, folks. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks for listening. We out. Love you all. Thank you.